Hello to all of our PSR students, friends, and families. Our journey continues towards its end, and hopefully we still have many of you with us. Last week, we invited you to begin or deepen your relationship to God through prayer. We were reminded that we must spend as much time with God just as much as we would spend with our best friend, for that is exactly what God invites us all to do. This week, we'll go deeper with our Christian family by focusing on the greatest human being ever conceived, next to Jesus, of course. Today, we'll give our sole focus of prayer towards his mother, Mary, so that she will bring our needs and prayers to her son, Jesus. You see, without Mary's yes, we wouldn't have Jesus. And without Jesus, well, let's not even consider that one. In your family's discussion and prayer time for this week, I'd like for us to consider the idea of presenting Mary with a special gift. Just like any lady, Mary loves to get flowers, so if we were able, I'm sure many of us would love the idea of gifting her with some beautiful, fresh roses as a way to thank her for all she has done and continues to do on our behalf. Mary is a mother like no other we have ever had. So if God is the perfect father, then Mary takes the prize for the most perfect mother. This week in our discussion and prayer time, we'll consider our appreciation for what Mary does on our behalf. All throughout her life, Mary was a model of what we are also called to be. She was obedient, humble, prayerful, and very contemplative. Scripture tells us many times that Mary would contemplate in her heart the meaning of many of the major spiritual events of her life. So in just the same way, we're called to do the same. So as we offer our prayers and petitions to Mary, she takes all of her gifts and offers them to her son as a beautiful offering of grace, along with our prayers of petition. What loving son could refuse the request of his mother? Well, in much the same way as we petition Mary for a special request, she'll bring them to her son, asking that he grant them on our behalf. Just as Jesus honored his mother's request at the wedding at Cana, Jesus will also honor each request that Mary makes on our behalf. So never hesitate to bring our needs to Mary. As a loving mother, she will never hesitate to offer what is best for us. So how can we give our gift of roses to Our Lady? Well, it's cheaper and easier than you think. You see, our church has given us a way to present our Heavenly Mother a bouquet of fresh flowers that will never decay in the form of prayers. You see, the rosary is our bouquet of roses lovingly presented to our spiritual mother. So imagine if we were to pick a flower from the ground and bring it to our mothers. Most moms would love the idea of receiving a beautiful flower that was freshly picked and lovingly presented by her children. It wouldn't matter if it was a wild flower or a stunning rose. Just the fact that her child thought so lovingly of her as to present it, that would have been enough. So imagine that instead of, instead of picking just one flower, you picked a dozen of beautiful roses and presented them to your mom. Think about how proud and honored she would be to receive them. But now imagine if you could just have picked four dozen roses. That's 48 freshly picked, beautiful, sweet smelling and stunning roses, all picked at their peak blossom. Imagine the glow on her face as she sees and smells them. Can you see it? Well, I have a way for you to do that and more for your earthly mom, as well as your heavenly mother. It's called the rosary. In the rosary, we lovingly present not just one rose or a dozen or even four dozen, but we present 53 roses in the form of 53 Hail Marys, along with several Our Fathers, Glory Bees, and other prayers as well. Imagine the utter splendor of Mary's face to receive such a bountiful bouquet. But there's a catch that I want you to be aware of. 
Imagine if you would have picked a flower for your mom and then you walked in the house, threw it at her feet, and then ran off. How happy you think she would be then? How grateful do you think she would feel? Well, in a way, that's how Mary must feel when we rush through our prayers of the rosary with a desire simply to just get it over with. So instead, I urge you to pray the rosary, not just say the rosary. Each and every prayer that we offer should be a flower that is lovingly cared for and presented to our Mary, our mother, and placed gently at her feet as a way to honor her for her love and care for us. Every word of prayer should be another petal of each flower that is lovingly cared for until they are presented to her with love. I can only imagine what that would be like to see the glow of Mary's face to accept such a loving gift. So that's your challenge for this week. Yes, the rosary is a prayer that we pray the same prayer over and over and over again. But now hopefully you know why we pray the same prayers over and over and over again. Wouldn't it be nice that if we can offer a thousand roses to Mary every single day, or a million, or even a billion? Well, you realize that there's over a billion Catholics worldwide? Can you imagine if they each said one rosary in a single day? So let's get started, shall we? I wish your family the best as we have studied and discussed and prayed together these past few weeks. Our journey is nearing its end, but there's still one last task to perform. And I hope you'll be enriched by this next part of the journey. Until next week, stay safe and healthy and always keep offering our love and prayers to Mary, our most perfect mother. She's just waiting to help us along the way. So until we meet again, may God bless each of you.